Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today I am going to show you one of the most important things when it comes to resin 3D printing. So let's go ahead and get into it. So if you've been resin 3D printing for a little while now, or you're still pretty new to it, this is the video for you, because I'm going to show you exactly what I do in my processes when it comes to cleaning my resin 3D prints. Now one disclaimer, I'm just going to say there are so many different ways to clean your resin 3D prints. I have seen so many different variations of the kind of method that I'm using, and honestly I've seen so many other ways that don't even use anything close to my method. I'm not saying one is better than another, it's really about the results you get. So I'm not here to say that this is the way that you should be cleaning your resin 3D prints, because that's not true. If you see somebody else's method that you really like and then you take some of my ideas and you blend them together and you're still getting a clean 3D print with no excess resin on it, then it looks like you found a winner. Like It's not a, not a big deal. It's whatever works for you. But I am going to show you my processes and how I do it and the reasoning behind those steps. Now, I might have a few more steps than other people, but I... My results, I my pieces always fit together and I always have amazing detail for my 3D prints. So I can't fight my results. So if you're just here to steal a couple of my ideas, fantastic. I mean, that's great. I am glad, you, I want you to be here to steal my ideas and just take them for your own. I just want you to have clean 3D prints. That's all that really matters to me. So, let's get into the very first thing. Before we even get started, before we even start 3D printing anything, I have to tell you this one thing. You have to hollow your prints. Your prints have to be hollowed. That way that there is holes that the resin can escape from and so you can get isopropyl alcohol in there to clean it out or water depending on whatever resin you might be using. So you want to be able to have holes in your 3D prints and they need to be big enough. So once you have those holes set, you can absolutely start 3D printing this. Now this model today is from Wicked and they make some amazing 3D models. And I'll go ahead and put a link to their stuff in the description below. But they already hollow all of their models for you and this is already pre-supported. That is the most amazing part. So all I have to do is literally throw this into Chitu Box and hit slice because everything is already hollowed for me and supported. So the next thing you have to do after it's done 3D printing is you have to take it off the build plate. Now there's always so much extra resin stuck to your 3D prints at this point. So I always like to have a big silicone mat that I put all of my stuff onto. That way it's easy to wipe up and clean and then I know what of my area is contaminated versus not contaminated. Now if you don't know what contaminated versus non-contaminated means, I strongly recommend you watching my intro to resin 3D printing right up here. And I'll put a link for it right there for you. But putting everything on my silicone mat, I know that everything in this area is contaminated and I don't mess anything up and I'm not touching anything that I shouldn't touch. I get everything off of the build plate and then put the build plate back on to the 3D printer for the next batch to print. And while we're talking about contaminated versus non-contaminated, this is a good segue to really talk about personal protective equipment. Now, PPE is vital when it comes to this hobby, and I want to make sure that everybody is staying safe while doing this. Dealing around any type of open containers when it comes to isopropyl alcohol or even resin for that matter, you always want to be wearing a respirator and you want to make sure it's the right type of respirator because you do not want to be breathing in any of these fumes whatsoever. Wear a respirator. I know you might not think that you need one all the time, but wear one all the time because over time it can really lead to bad lung conditions. This hobby is fantastic, but is not worth our health. And the other two things is when you are dealing with any type of alcohol in a big <laughs> container like this, I always wear safety glasses. Safety glasses are important because you do not want this stuff splashing in your eyes whatsoever. Even though I wear glasses, I still take these off and put in safety glasses because they give me the full protection on the sides. And nitro gloves because nitro gloves will actually protect us from the resin. There's no such thing as too much 
protective equipment. I will say that. You could even use a, a shield, a face shield, instead of using any type of safety glasses. So I want to make sure that you all are using your personal protective equipment because this stuff is dangerous and you need to stay safe. So now I will get off of my soapbox and we can get back to the video. Now this is the one thing of my step one and two, it really doesn't matter which way you do it, but this is the way that I do it most of the time. So the first thing I do is I remove my supports because all of these supports have all of this hidden resin kind of stuck inside it. And I do not want to bring that into my isopropyl alcohol wash because I want the least amount of resin, liquid resin in there as possible. So I am going to go ahead and I remove them now. Now you can take a heat gun to remove these if you want to, but most of the time, the way that Wicked specifically supports their stuff, I never have to do anything. I mean, I'm going to have to do a little sanding afterwards and I know that's really it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and peel them all off right now. Once I have them all peeled off, I move on to my second step. And this is the second step. I have this nice little bucket full of dirty isopropyl alcohol. So if you've been 3D printing resin for a while now, you already know that over time, your alcohol wash gets dirty. It gets really dirty. And the way that you can keep it the cleanest possible is you're going to do it in stages like I'm doing it here. I have a bucket of very dirty isopropyl alcohol. And this bucket is really what I use to get all of the big chunks of all of that liquid resin out of there. So I'm using this bucket to remove all of that excess inside of the 3D print, as well as on the outside of the 3D print. And I'm just putting all of my pieces and parts in there and I let them set for about five minutes minutes. After that, then I take them out and I start washing them. And I'm only washing them with this little uh, spouncer. It's a little sponge on a stick and I have different sizes. And I will literally just gently wipe it down really nicely. So once I have them all pre-washed essentially and they're in the basket, then I'm actually going to slowly dunk it into my wash tank. So this is the wash tank for my Mercury X wash and cure station. And this one specifically is the wash part of it, obviously. Now I just put it all in there and I make sure everything is set to the bottom. So then I'm going to go ahead and set the timer to a desired time of my choosing and then hit start and just let her go. Now this is in a 91% isopropyl alcohol and it is continuously moving and washing these parts. Now when it comes down to it, wash and cure stations are just, they're nice because they're easy. You could literally just throw everything you wanted to in your wash and cure station and skip all these other steps that I'm showing you. But I try to save my alcohol as long as I physically can. And this is a good way of doing it, of having a pre-wash with dirty isopropyl alcohol. But once I have it in here and it's running, I know it's going to get my parts really good. There is a high chance that I don't even need to do anything after I'm done with these parts. They'll be perfectly washed. But sometimes, depending if a part is laying on another piece, I, it doesn't wash it perfectly. But a wash and cure station, if you run it a couple times and kind of jostle the stuff around and just let it go, they do the trick. I mean, they are fantastic to use. Now, the one thing I will say, I do really enjoy the Elegoo wash and cure stations because they're two separate stations. They're not a combo of like, it's all in one. I've had the all in ones, I've used them for quite some time and they just, there's things about them that annoy me. I know the price point is just a little bit lower than what these are at, but to me, paying a few extra bucks to have two separate units, well worth it because, Maybe that'll be another video to explain why I like these more than the other two and ones. Anyway, once this is done, we're gonna go ahead and take this out. Now the big key, when you're taking the basket out of your wash tank, let this be the tip of the day. Yes, tip of the day. When you're removing this, you wanna lift up the basket and do not remove it completely from the actual tank. Just bring it out of the isopropyl alcohol and then lean it to the left and then lean it to the right. And do this a couple times back and forth. Then go forward and backward, forward and backward. 
And then what you're going to see is there are going to be these little pockets of isopropyl alcohol that got stuck inside the 3D prints. Doing this will actually allow them to get jostled around and be almost completely removed from inside the print. That way you're not wasting all of this extra isopropyl alcohol because you want to keep it in the tub. So you jostling it back and forth like this, I mean, it really is something that's nice to do because when you take this out of there and you pick it up and you just pours out, it, that is... Let's just say that makes me very upset and I yell a lot, but I'm not gonna show that part on camera. Yeah. Now the next thing, all I'm going to be doing is laying out all of my parts away from each other, all spread out nicely. Then I'm just walking away. I am going to let that dry 100%. I do not want any kind of alcohol on here whatsoever. Now what I typically do, I will just let it be and then I'll come back to it the next day. I'm never in this gigantic rush to get my prints ready. So even for this video, I just let them go and the next day I came back to them. Now this is an important step you have to make sure they're absolutely dry. And this is also in the curing process. You do not want to cure any resin 3D print when it's still wet, because you can get some nasty things. It can get like some gooey stuff that'll never fully cure, or it will just, I don't know. It just, it leaves some kind of residue on there and you just don't want that. Make sure your prints are completely dry and you have to blot them with a paper towel and then just let them go for a while. Put them in front of a fan if you have to, if you really are trying to speed through this, but I strongly recommend with this hobby, don't race, don't like take your time. Everything we do in this hobby, it, it's never good when you're pushing yourself to try to rush through something. Just, just pace yourself. This is a hobby that we're supposed to enjoy, not to rush through and get it over with. So, like I said, I just wait until they're 100% dry. All right, real quick, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you to all of these amazing people for supporting me on Patreon this month. If you want to be like these people, you will get exclusive access to my private Discord channels where we talk about painting, 3D printing, and everything else. And you'll also get the opportunity to vote on different things that I'm doing for videos and even things in my videos. Like, I actually did a poll for what I'm going to 3D print for this specific video. And Beast, he was the winner. Everybody wanted me to print him, so here he is. So if you're interested, I'll put a link below. Other than that, let's get back to the video. Now the next step is one that I feel like it's missed a lot. And that is, once you've washed everything and you think everything's good, don't assume that it's perfect, because it's not. It never is. There has never been one time that I have done this used a wash and cure station and all this other stuff, and it's perfect and then I'm done. Just like I was saying, if a part is laying on top of another piece, it can't wash what's in between there very well, so you could miss it. So the key here is look at every single piece and part that you have printed. And the, what you're looking for is honestly nothing. You're looking for no shiny spots, no wet areas. Everything should look very nice and clean. It should look like it's already cured, honestly. And you just wanna look at this and make sure everything is perfect. Now, when you do see these little spots, you'll see a little spot that looks wet. Even though you know that the isopropyl alcohol has had enough time to dry, it's resin. So what we need to do is we need to clean this. And this is what I do. So what we need to do is we need to clean these pieces that have these little wet looking spots. Now this is what I like to use. I like to use isopropyl alcohol, 91%, and this is on a spray bottle. And the great thing is, is if you buy this spray bottle once, you can just keep refilling it because that's what I have done for quite some time. Now, this little bottle is great because it's got an on and off and you can just spray and there you go. And what I'll do is I will spray this directly on my pieces and parts. Then I will rub those areas with my hand or I will use one of those spouncers that I used previously. After we're done with that, we're right back to where we just started. We're gonna set it all out and we're going to let it dry. 
And once it's dry and everything looks good, it is ready to be cured. And then you can throw this into your cure station or your curing box or whatever you use. There are so many different things to be able to cure your 3D prints with. But for me, I used the Mercury X Cure Station. And this thing is great because it has three bars of light, one from the bottom and two on each side. I just find that this thing cures my prints beautifully and I have loved it ever since El Goo sent it to me. So once I've got everything washed up, the last thing I really like to do is I like to just put the model together and I will usually use like blue poster tack and then just to have everything kind of held together temporarily for me. And this model turned out awesome. I'd like to thank all my patrons for voting on this one because I don't think I would have actually printed this out. And they really wanted me to 3D print this one. So he looks amazing. Those glasses, I could not believe the amount of detail on there. And I am terrified of actually painting this because I've already broken one pair of glasses in this. This is the second head that I printed, but we'll see. <laughs> he might not have glasses. And the detail on the Mars 4 Max is just amazing. And you can only get that detail if you're properly washing your 3D prints. So if you have a high quality 3D printer like the Mars 4 Max and you're not getting these same results, I it means you're not washing your prints and you're curing extra resin in those little cracks and crevices or your exposure settings aren't perfect and if you don't know how to set your exposure settings I actually did a video last week explaining how to do that and I'll go ahead and put a link to it right up here for you and now I always love your guys's comments explaining all of the different ways that you guys do all of these processes too so if you have a different process of how you wash your 3d prints please leave them in the comments I'm kind of curious and I'd love to hear how you guys do it so I hope this video has helped you, and in next week's video, I am going to explain all of the ways that you can cure your resin 3D prints, because just like washing, there's a ton of different ways that you can cure them. So if that video is out, I'm going to go ahead and put it right here for you. Other than that, I wish you a great day, and I'll see you in this video right here.